what is chemistry? Um, chemistry is kind of like, I guess, a physical science, you could say. It pretty much just explores, you know, the structure, composition of um, things that exist within our world and the universe. Um, and you also have not only the theoretical side, but also the application of it, how we use chemistry in everyday life. You also explore this in um, year 12 as well. So it just keeps on going in that sense. Um, and it pretty much just explores like little building blocks of the universe, right? And that's pretty much your atoms. And even more further on, like your protons, electrons, neutrons, etc. There's also one thing to note, the syllabus changed in 2019. Not that it concerns you guys, because, you know, there's been a few rounds of the HSC with the new syllabus. So you have plenty of access to um, past papers. But just one thing to note, if you're going to be using previous exams, just note that there's a um, greater focus on problem solving rather than memorizing. So you need to really understand and grapple the content rather than memorize the answers. Um, so in terms of the difference between prelim and HSC chem, um, I feel like Prelim Chem sets the foundations that you're going to be needing for HSC Chem. And if you do well in Prelim Chem, you'll be, you know, much more likely to be able to do well in HSC Chem. You don't need to, you know, spend your holidays revising over and over again for HS for Prelim Chem. Um, so make sure that you focus well. Um, at the same time, some concepts actually don't apply in HSC Chem when you're exploring it in Prelim Chem. Um, but everything that we're covering the lecture today is going to show up in HSC Chem, most likely. Um, and HSC Chemistry is also, I mean, since, it, you know, there is obviously a jump in content, um, just in terms of difficulty, but it's also, I find, much more interesting. So, yeah. And second question is, HSC Chemistry more important than Brilliant Chem? Sort of, but that doesn't mean um, prelim chem is not important. Um, so, like I said, prelim chem really sets the foundations before you jump onto um, HSC chemistry. So, yeah. Um, and this is really the structure of prelim chem as well as HSC chem. You may be already aware of this. Um, prelim chem has four modules just like HSC, but... Um, the four modules explore properties and structure of matter. You, um, you get an introduction to quantitative chemistry, which is really the basis for the rest of these modules. Um, and then you also look at reactive chemistry. Um, some of it appears in year 12, some of it doesn't. And then you also have something called drivers of reactions. So that concept also does apply in year 12. So I feel like out of these three modules, the one that probably doesn't apply as much is module three, but that doesn't mean it's completely ignored. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And then in HSC chem, you look at equilibrium, um, you look at acid base reactions, you, you start going into organic chem, and you also have a module where you pretty much use all the knowledge in these three um, modules and then you combine it in um, this module. But yeah, that's pretty much how the syllabus looks like. Um, and like I've already mentioned, um, you don't need to stress too much on prelim chem, but at the same time, like because HSC obviously counts your ATAR and year 11 doesn't, but you need a good foundation in prelim chem in order to do well in um, HSC chemistry. And the next question I guess you may all be having is how do you study for chemistry? Um, before launching into study, you actually need to know like, you know, what, what exactly is chemistry testing you on? You need to have good logical reasoning, good math skills, um, as well as succinct, um, clear language and focusing on your weaknesses is really important. So, um, the first thing that I would say is make your notes um, every week. Be consistent with it. Um, if you make it every month, you're going to be so overwhelmed by the end of it. It's just not going to happen. So either be doing your notes every day or every week and also have practice questions because you never know when you're wrong until you've actually done it. Um, 
So yeah. And in just in terms of ensuring how to answer questions, you need to ensure that um, you have concise wording um, and that you're not just regurgitating what you've already memorized. It's more about explaining what you've um, learned. Um, and that's where, you know, like your resources come in, talk to your teacher. Um, some schools may have specific ways they want to do things. Um, my school definitely did. And, um, yeah, I lost a few marks sometimes when I didn't get the wording that they wanted. Um, so yeah, just be aware of it. And, um, just, you know, send your teacher like, um, different, you know, practice problems and just tell them to mark it because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are marking it for you. So, um, you know, feel, feel free to, um, you know, just send things to your um, teacher or even your peers if you want to share with them or, um, you know, your tutors, etc. In terms of types of chem questions, I feel like there's three main ones. You have multiple choice. Um, you also have short answer. So that's like typically like a three or four marker. And then you have a long response. Long response is when it's probably like, six to eight marks and um yeah i feel like you tend to have to write it like a mini essay you need to have subheadings and things like that um and with the new syllabus uh short or mid-length response questions are also more common that doesn't mean that you don't see long response you definitely do um so yeah just know how to tackle all the three question types in terms of MCQ, it's typically straightforward. Um, it it wouldn't like test your knowledge too much. So it's probably going to be something like a memorized fact or like simple data interpretation. But that being said, um, some of the hardest questions in HSC have been MCQ. So um, you have to be very careful with the detail in it. Um, and calculations can be sometimes harder than expected. And time management is also really important. In terms of short answer questions, um, I feel like you just need to be straightforward, you know, ensure that you're um, defining key terms, including equations, and ensure that you have links between your answers, as in you link one concept to the other, because without that, um, you would be uh, losing marks. Um, so you just need to be succinct and concise and actually answer the question and be straightforward. In terms of the type of claim questions that you get, so in terms of um, long response, they're similar to kind of writing mini essays, like I said. So, but if you prepare for the topic, um, it shouldn't be too hard because really it's just, um, you know, providing key definitions and equations and then just having links throughout your response. And um, yeah, I feel like long response can go both ways. So in the sense that if you don't know much about the topic, but you know key definitions, you'll be getting marks, but it's easy to lose marks if you don't, um, if you're not logical or, a, or it's like you're not having clear links in your answer. So in long response questions, it's really important that you um, subhead as well. So if we look at this question, this is a buffer question. You don't need to know what buffers are. By the way, this is year 12. Um, but if you look at like a buffer, a buffer is pretty much something that doesn't change in pH. So you would define the key concepts relating to it, which is Le Chatelier's principle. Um, and you'd explain Le Chatelier's principle. And you would also um, further on, you know, provide an example of a buffer and explain what happens in a buffer. Um, and you would also, in this case of a buffer, explain what happens when um, another reactant is added. So that's, how, that's kind of how you structure it. Um, we do have practice questions today in this lecture. So um, you will be having a go at those as well. So feel free to um, ask me any questions. 